Good afternoon, everybody. This is a live extreme weather briefing, and we have a lot to talk about this afternoon, including a bomb cyclone that's going to materialize tonight across portions of the Northeast. There have been blizzard warnings that are now issued across uh, parts of western New York, including just to the south of Buffalo, across the Chautauqua Ridge there, where winds are going to be gusting over 55 miles an hour. Uh, snow will be measured uh, in feet, probably in excess of two feet there across western New York. The biggest totals are likely going to happen over the Tug Hill Plateau across western New York, downwind of Lake Ontario. Watertown is also include, included in that blizzard warning. And this is the responsible upper level pattern here. You can see the uh, surface low just below my head. And this is uh, from a, a trough that is going negatively tilted. So this is a 300 millibar map on the left. Uh, this is the trough axis across the Great Lakes that goes from the northwest to the southeast. That is that infamous negative tilt that we hear uh, so much, so often. And the upper level jet dynamics uh, downstream of that negative tilted trough are going to contribute to the rapid deepening of this bomb cyclone, uh, dropping well in excess of 12 millibars. In fact, uh, 24 millibars over a 24-hour period. And um, downstream at 300 millibars, when you get a negatively tilted trough like this, you get uh, what's known as difluence at 300 millibars. That creates uh, a vacuum cleaner effect uh, underneath it, and that leads to the rapid deepening of that surface low. Surface pressures uh, fall rapidly uh, beneath uh, that difluence aloft, and that's going to lead to the rapid deepening of that surface low beneath that. And you also have a jet streak here at 300 millibars. So you have an ageostrophic wind uh, component that is directed uh, from left to right in that type of a configuration when you're slowing down in the U direction uh, and you rotate that axis so it is parallel to the jet streak that creates a left to right uh, oriented ageostrophic wind component and that enhances the difluence even more just in the left exit region of that jet streak and beneath that that's where there's going to be rapid deepening of a surface low and this is in the GFS and tonight by about midnight, it already has the surface low down to 993 millibars, and that's going to further deepen uh, as that, that low becomes vertically stacked over the eastern Great Lakes. The winds on the back side of that system are going to be very cold, very strong, gusting over 55 miles an hour, picking up some moisture over the Great Lakes, Lake Ontario and Lake Erie, and there's also going to be some orographic enhancement along the Chautauqua Ridge uh, there in western New York, just to the south and southwest of Buffalo. And, of course, the Tug Hill Plateau, which is one of the snowiest places in the world, is really going to get hammered by this storm system, likely two to four feet of snow accumulation from this thing. And here are those blizzard warnings that are in effect for this bomb cyclone. I'm going to break down the models, uh, the time series of this uh, bomb cyclone happening and we'll show you that low deepening tonight through tomorrow but this these are the blizzard warning areas here in red downwind of lake ontario and along the chautauqua ridge to the south of buffalo that includes the jamestown area as well i've chased lake effect along the chautauqua ridge many times and they absolutely get blasted by lake effect when you get those westerly northwesterly winds off of lake erie and so far it's been such a warm winter that the lakes are largely unfrozen. There's a lot of warm water, relatively warm water, uh, still remaining open water there that's going to lead to moisture and is going to be transported downstream, enhancing those snowfall accumulations. Rochester, you're in a little bit of a dry zone right in the middle, whereas the uh, blizzard warning along the Chautauqua Ridge, that's going to pick up some moisture from Lake Huron and uh, the eastern part of Lake Erie. You do have winter storm warnings from Niagara Falls and along the, the western Lake Ontario shoreline where you are going to get a little bit of fetch from the northwesterly winds over the open waters of western Lake Ontario. And uh, a winter storm watch continues for Syracuse. I wouldn't be surprised if that's bumped up to a, a blizzard warning for sure, a winter storm warning in that location. Now let's go back on over to the forecast models and show you how the different GFS and the European models show the evolution of the surface low. This is tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So the surface low is about 1,003 millibars there. This is the GFS forecast. We go six hours in advance, and you can see the low is already down to 993 millibars, dropping 10 millibars in a six-hour period. This is at about midnight Eastern time, centered over probably Scranton, 
Pennsylvania there. And the winds are really going to start ramping up across the Great Lakes. Dangerous waters over Lake Huron, Lake, uh, all of Lake Erie, even Lake Michigan is going to have monster waves. A lot of flooding, coastal flooding along the southern tip of uh, Lake Michigan there. And now let's step forward another six hours, and this is at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. We've got a 984 millibar surface low. Drops another 9 millibars by tomorrow morning. That's 19 millibars over uh, a 12-hour a, a period. Eighteen hour period, excuse me. And now let's go forward to eighteen Z tomorrow. This is at about noon, and uh, the, the the bottom drops out. The surface low is down to nine hundred and seventy nine millibars. We go up to the upper levels, and again, this is on the Pivotal Weather website, an incredible website for these high resolution models. You have the negative trough axis continuing, but the surface low and the upper level low are becoming vertically stacked here over southern Ontario. That's a sign that uh, the system is beginning to weaken and has reached its peak. There you can see the upper level low becoming closed off, the surface low directly underneath it. And at this point, the surface low lows tend to fill, fill in. There you've got a 984 millibar pressure, so it begins to rise, but still you've got westerly cold westerly winds across Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, dumping big time snow downwind across the higher terrain, including the Tug Hill Plateau and the Chautauqua Ridge across western New York. And that's why that blizzard warning is going to continue until late afternoon on Friday at the very least. So this is Thursday evening tomorrow, and the blizzard is going to be raging downwind. Uh, south of Buffalo especially. Buffalo though you're going to get hammered by one to two feet of snow but still that the heaviest lake effect is going to focus over the Chautauqua Ridge just to the south of town. Tug Hill Plateau likely four feet of snow. This is a textbook lake effect pattern except it's very late in the season so it is quite unusual. Normally the Great Lakes are frozen over for the most part especially Lake Erie this time of year which is a more shallow Great Lake. Lake Ontario is a bit deeper and remains ice-free even longer. But this winter so far, since it's been so incredibly warm, the Great Lakes are mostly ice-free with a lot of relatively warm water for these cold winds to pick up that moisture and deposit it in the form of intense lake effect snow and blizzard conditions. Where these isobars are closer together, that's where the stronger winds are going to happen. Generally, the winds are parallel to these lines of equal pressure or isobars. Let's hop on over to the European model. Quite a bit of agreement uh, in the evolution of this bomb cyclone between the European and the GFS models. We can look now at some of those snow totals. Accumulations measured one to two feet out there in the northeast. Let me see if I can get a zoom here on the Pivotal Weather website. You can zoom in on these different regions, a great tool. And the GFS, of course, has nearly two feet of snow across the Tuck Hill Plateau. It's probably going to be a little bit higher than that. Parts of southern Ontario really get hammered as well. Western New York, one to two feet of snow across that Chautauqua Ridge. The GFS actually had higher totals yesterday in yesterday's runs, so it has gravitated a bit back toward the European model. I suspect that the European model is underdoing the totals here across the Chautauqua Ridge. They're likely going to be a lot greater than that. And now let's talk about the potential for Dixie Alley that could uh, impact uh, the area next week. This is the target area. I am basing this largely on the European model. And again, this is for Tuesday, which is Super Tuesday uh, next week. It's going to be a big day for voting, I believe, for the Democratic Party across several different states. And there could be a severe weather threat in portions of Dixie Alley, especially if you believe the European model. That's what I've projected this target area on. You can see a slight negative tilt uh, to this potent trough that's going to be digging in to Dixie Alley and a large warm sector with strong southwesterly winds 
50, 70, 80 knots at the mid-levels of the atmosphere, overspreading that warm sector. There's also going to be, and there is some model discrepancies, and I'm going to show you the different evolutions of the upper level sto uh, st storm system. This is the one that's depicted by the European model. And the difference, <coughs> excuse me, the differences between the European model and the GFS are pretty striking. The GFS shows a much weaker system, likely a system that's not going to lead to severe weather, but the European shows a much stronger system here with that negative tilt. Uh, this is uh, the evening of March 3rd, so that would be Tuesday. And uh, downstream of Tuesday of this negative tilted trough, you do have some diverging mid and upper level flow downstream right over that warm sector. This system is digging into Texas. Most of the flow, though, notice is on the eastern side of this trough. So leading up to this time, the flow is oriented on the western side or symmetrically or, or, or distributed symmetrically. But in this case, with most of the flow on the east side of the trough, it's not digging uh, far, far south anymore. So this is beginning to shear out and the GFS has a much stronger anti-cyclone stronger flow with another system in the northern branch of the jet stream and the gfs leads to a much faster shearing out of this upper level system over top this anti-cyclone centered over portions of the caribbean uh, the subtropics there down near florida but the european has a much stronger upper level system as depicted here and it leads to a very strong low level jet across east texas arkansas across the lower mississippi river valley Two points pumping northward uh, from the Gulf of Mexico. So if you believe the European model, which generally is a, a better performing model, then I think there is going to be a pretty widespread severe weather event with a surface low ejecting to the northeast like this uh, across Dixie Alley with a strongly sheared and a very unstable warm sector to the south of it. But if you believe the GFS model, then the threat for severe weather is less favorable with this setup. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to remove my head there first, show you the differences. Here's the GFS, which shows stronger flow on the backside of a, a system ejecting, or, or in the northern branch. So this, you can see this stronger flow across New England that's associated with the subtle trough in the northern branch of the jet. Uh, across New England, downstream of the Hudson Bay region. That leads to a stronger mid-level flow across the mid-Atlantic as well, ahead of this system. And it leads to a, a weaker and even positively tilted trough, according to the GFS. So this is a weaker upper-level system. It leads to a weaker surface low, a more diffuse low-level jet across Dixie Alley, pumping uh, northward, uh, more modest dew points. It has a weaker surface low as well. So if you do believe the GFS with this stronger flow downstream across New England and a flatter system that shears out a little bit more quickly over top this anti-cyclone, then I think that the threat of severe weather next week on Super Tuesday is less. But we're going to have to see over future model runs if the GFS trends toward the European or if the European trends toward the GFS. And that uh, will determine or when they, these models agree, that's when the confidence will increase rapidly. And here's the 850 millibar forecast for the evening, for Tuesday evening, Super Tuesday. This is the European model. And with that stronger upper level storm system that I just showed you on the European, that leads to a really thick low level jet axis. And you've got a low-level jet in excess of 50 knots across a large portion of Dixie Alley, including Louisiana, the entire state of Mississippi, central and western Tennessee, all the way up to the Ohio River Valley. And that's what happens when you get a more intense upper-level system with that negative tilt as well uh, to the uh, upper-level trough axis. That uh, leads to a stronger low-level jet here across Dixie Alley. And uh, this contributes to strong wind shear as well across that warm sector. And so anytime you have winds a kilometer above the ground that are in excess of 50 knots, that's going to contribute to the wind shear, wind shear that's favorable for tornadoes. But still, this is about a week out, uh, so there's going to be a lot of changes in the forecast models as we lead up to this event.
But on the other hand, the GFS with a much weaker upper level system has a very diffuse low level jet. And in fact, it has stronger low level winds at 850 millibars across the mid-Atlantic in association with that subtle system in the northern branch of the jet stream. And you have a pretty weak uh, veered low level jet, veered meaning more out of the southwest uh, to northeast than out of the south to north. The, the European has a more backed low level jet, which is much more north south, which increases the low level shear across the warm sector and also the moisture pumps northward. So, really, right now we've got one model that shows a pretty substantial severe weather event, and then we've got another model that shows a much less substantial severe weather event and possibly even no severe weather potential. I do think that with either of these scenarios though, there is going to be a lot of rainfall across the deep south, flooding rains, and there's already river flooding out there. Uh, it's only going to get worse, likely through the spring at, with this energized subtropical jet stream and more systems coming in across the southern branch. Here are the European forecast dew points for Tuesday evening. And with that stronger low level jet, the stronger storm system, that leads to more moisture pumped northward. Look at all this moisture sitting in the Gulf of Mexico. And with a more backed low level jet, it pumps upper 60s dew points across Louisiana, Mississippi. But still, if the European trends back toward the GFS model, then the threat of severe weather is going to decrease dramatically. So now I'm going to go back to these uh, forecast models. Let's look at a couple quick forecast photographs since it's been quite a long time since we've looked at that. We'll go back to uh, the European model, which shows a much more favorable severe weather event Tuesday evening. You can see more snow across the Rockies, especially the northern Rockies, over the next seven days. And here's that thick low-level jet axis. Let's pick down near Jackson, Mississippi, and look at these uh, forecast photographs. And here's the forecast photograph out of Jackson a week out, so it's pretty reckless to be looking at these forecast photographs, but we can do that here. You've got a low-level jet a kilometer above the ground at 60 knots and relatively backed just west of due south winds, south-southwest winds here, 60 knots. Surface wind less than 20 knots out of the due south. That creates nearly a 40 knot 0 to 1 kilometer shear vector. Storm motion to the northeast rapid at 50 knots. But that creates a critical angle in excess of 50 degrees, which is quite substantial in Dixie Alley. The upper level winds here, 70 to 80 knots that are contributing to those rapid storm motions, but also leading to favorable deep layer shear or bulk shear to evacuate the rain from those updrafts and lead to long lived mesocyclones. But really with a big time 40 knot, zero to one kilometer shear vector, like you see here, it's gonna be quite a substantial severe weather event if the European model verifies. Again, looking at the GFS, you're gonna see flat photographs, uh, less moisture, and much less of a threat of severe weather, but certainly a threat of flooding rainfall. Looking at a, a photograph in northern Mississippi, even more favorable for tornadoes on this setup. Look at this elevated mix layer punching in at the mid-levels. Bigger shear vector, some of those winds even 65 knots, about a kilometer above the ground. Critical angle even higher, about 53 degrees. So the area within this hodograph right here, that's proportional to the storm relative helicity, and that's substantial with this type of a setup. But again, the GFS forecast hodographs are much less favorable. Let's now pick up a hodograph down in Louisiana. You can see a more veered low-level jet southwest of the surface low a little bit less storm relative shear as you'd expect in the southwestern portion of that warm sector critical angle 39 degrees a little bit lower so the more favorable hodographs not surprisingly are in the vicinity of that stronger low level jet but at 18 z that stronger low level jet is further to the southwest across louisiana western mississippi here 
Look at this photograph. This is a textbook tornado producing photograph there with a ton of storm relative helicity between that storm motion vector and the photograph curve. So really it depends on if the European model trends to the GFS or vice versa. Here is the GFS forecast low level jet, a lot more veered, weaker. So we pick a forecast sounding out of Jackson, marginal severe by the analogs, low level jets less than 40 knots according to this. And that's because of the shape of the upper level storm system and especially because of the upper level winds across New England and the Northeast being much stronger, leading to a more zonal flow pattern, a positively tilted trough that shears out before it even reaches Dixie Alley. And that's why the, the confidence is pretty low in this setup. But because the European is such a trusted model, Uh, that was why it was important to put out the post. Super Tuesday, such a big day for travel, people being out and about. So certainly be careful, but mainly stay tuned. No need to panic, as you know. We're, I'm going to continue to watch uh, this setup for the middle of next week for Dixie Alley and for the flooding, not only for the severe weather, and we'll monitor the bomb cyclone when I do my live briefing tomorrow. We'll break down just how far... Uh, how low the, the surface low has dropped. It looks like it could drop into the 970s, which in the tropics would be equivalent to a weaker hurricane. But of course, up here in the mid-latitudes where you have temperature gradients, things operate a little bit differently. You can't really compare the two. Wind feels much bigger with the mid-latitude storm. It's interacting with the temperature gradients, feeding off of the jet dynamics. But still, it could drop into the upper 970s tomorrow as that blizzard ramps up across western New York. So thank you guys for joining me today for this live briefing. I'm going to try to do these every day and also uh, deliver live storm chasing. And it looks like we could possibly be out in the field uh, the middle portion of next week. Never stop chasing.